Hello everyone, I'm Hayden Mahan, meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City, and this is our first video in a series of video for our Utah Water Outlook. You can find more videos like this every month through the rest of the winter and early spring as we go into the snowmelt runoff season. But for now, here is where we sit as of January 2024. So looking back, October through December were fairly dry across most of the state. In October, uh, northern Utah saw a series of storms uh, that brought some beneficial rain. However, southern Utah uh, saw pretty dry conditions for most of the month of October. And then in November, uh, fairly dry statewide. And then as we went into December, uh, we did have a series of storms in early December uh, that really helped to solidify our early season snowpack, particularly across northern Utah, um, the Wasatch Front um, and the Bear River Range Mountains. However, central and southern Utah uh, saw very dry conditions once again. And the first 24 days of January uh, brought a about a 10 day storm cycle to northern and central Utah that brought uh, very beneficial rain and mountain snow. Uh, some basins are anywhere between 130 to 300% of average. However, once again, southern Utah uh, far southern Utah missed out on a majority of this beneficial precipitation. Then put piecing all of this together, our water year to date, October 1st through January 24th, is um, showing near to slightly above average uh, precip across uh, portions of central and northern Utah, whereas in portions of central and especially far southern Utah, is dealing with uh, uh, precipitation much below average for this time of year. Now, if we look at our snowpack and how much water it has in it, uh, you can see most of our high elevation snow came in the form of really those two storm cycles. We had that early December storm cycle that brought our uh, snow water equivalent to near normal. And then we plateaued for a few weeks and then our mid-January storm cycle brought us back to near normal where we currently sit around eight inches of statewide SWE or snow water equivalent. Um, now we do have about two and a half months before we reach our peak SWE amounts, uh, which is right around 15 inches of snow water equivalent. Uh, so we still do have uh, quite a bit of time to continue building this snowpack. Um, but this is just the statewide view of SWE. Uh, if we break it down into individual watershed basins, you can see that across far northern Utah, uh, we're faring quite a bit better than portions of southern Utah, whereas southwestern Utah mountains are at 65% of normal. Compare that to 128% of normal up in the Raft River Mountains and near normal across central Utah. Now, where exactly is a lot of this SWE in the snowpack? Well, it's really confined to the Wasatch Range and the Bear River Mountains where uh, the snowpack there has well over a foot of water held in it. As you get down into central and southern Utah, those numbers start to drop um, pretty, pretty significantly. Now compare this to where we were this time last year, and you can see last year we were dealing with copious amounts of SWE all across the state um, and in all of the high elevations and, and really even in the mid elevations as well. Now I do want to point out that last year was a record breaking year, so it's certainly an outlier um, and that Last year, we had the most SWE that we've ever had on record for the state of Utah. Um, so we're, we're nowhere near where we were last year, um, but parts of the state are doing better uh, 
um, than, than other parts. Now, we are still benefiting from that snowpack that we had last year. Um, all of that snow melted and went into replenishing a lot of our reservoirs, streams, aquifers across the state. And you can see here on the right-hand figure shows that our statewide average for our reservoirs is right at 80%. Now, this doesn't include Lake Powell or Flaming Gorge. Um, those are such large reservoirs that it's going to take quite a bit, um, several years to, to replenish those. Um, but the medium and, and small reservoirs and um, across the state are sitting right around average. And then this figure here on the left shows you how, that com how we compare um, to where we typically are this time of year. So we're right around 80%. Typically, we tend to see our capacity um, between 55 and 60%, so um, over 20% above capacity where we normally should be this time of year. And looking back one year ago, before we had all of that snow melt and all of that water run off into the reservoirs, our reservoirs were actually quite a bit below average. Um, they were sitting right around 45% capacity. So we're 35% above where we were last year. Um, so what that's going to mean heading forward is that we won't have much additional capacity to work with whenever it comes to um, runoff. So last year we had, um, we were able to take in a lot of water from snowmelt. Um, this year we're, we're not going to be able to do that, but we are running quite a bit lower um, in terms of our snow water equivalent than where we were last year. Another um, um, variable to consider when we start to think about our um, snowmelt runoff season is the soil moisture conditions across the state. Um, and the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center um, calibrates our um, total soil moisture depth um, during the driest portion of the year, which is typically early November. Um, so you can see on the far left where we were before last winter, and to no one's surprise, we were much below average for soil moisture as we were coming out of um, a multi-year drought. Whereas this year, we are doing much better. Our soils are... Um, have a lot more water in them than they did this time last year. And you can see comparing this year to last year in the figure on the right, um, almost um, every uh, portion of the state has higher soil moisture content than we did um, at the beginning of last winter. Now, what this means is in instead of a lot of this runoff going to replenish um, soil moisture and replenish shallow aquifers um, like we saw last year. In fact, last year we lost a lot of the water that was um, melting out of the snowpack to replenishing that soil moisture in those shallow aquifers. This year we're going to have much more efficient runoff. Um, a lot of that water isn't uh, going to be required to go and replenish the soil moistures and replenish the um, shallow aquifers as, as our, our soil moistures um, are, are already um, higher than they were this time last year. And to no surprise to probably anyone, our drought conditions have improved drastically um, over the past couple of years. In fact, um, we're not dealing with any drought conditions except for portions of far eastern Utah and far southwestern Utah, where we've got some abnormally dry conditions and moderate drought. But all in all, um, our drought conditions um, are, are much improved um, compared to the last several years. Now, looking out through February, what can we expect in terms of precipitation? Well, the Climate Prediction Center uh, is favoring, um, is slightly favoring uh, above normal precipitation, particularly across southwestern Utah. And our temperatures are slightly favored to be above average across northern and northwestern Utah. 
And then looking at the three-month outlook, the signal's a little bit more muted for Utah. Um, we've got about equal chances of seeing above and below normal precipitation, whereas the temperatures look very similar to the one-month outlook, um, slightly favoring above normal temperatures for northwestern Utah. And that's going to do it for the first video in our series of videos. Expect the next video to come out um, sometime in February, and then our frequency will be about one every month. Um, if anybody has any questions, here is my contact information, as well as our senior hydrologist, Glenn Merrill. Feel free to reach out to him with any questions, or our meteorologist, Julie Cunningham. Um, she's happy to take questions that any of you may have. Um, but until then, we will uh, see you back uh, next month for our February video.